Heart of Faith Family Church, Holy Ghost Night. It's great to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I'm just going to open up with Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Our God is great, he's awesome, he's mighty, he's here, he's protecting us, he leads us, he guides us. His goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. We walk in his love, we're in his dwelling place, and his presence, and in him, it's the only thing we need. God is the answer for everything that we need. Amen. So just open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this night, Lord God. We just honor you and we magnify you tonight, Lord God. It is awesome to be in your presence, Lord Jesus God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit moving in this place tonight, God, touching each and every heart, moving to every person, God, speaking to each way, through each one what you would have them to say. Father, we just thank you and honor you for what you're going to do. We give you glory and praise in this house tonight, God. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you for hearts that are open and receptive tonight and everything you're going to do. We just thank you for it tonight, Jesus. Everybody, thank the Lord for your new church building. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our new church building paid in full. You've got this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go around and repeat what I love tonight. We're together again. Thank you. 
we will go wherever the Spirit says go. Go here, go there. We will be obedient to you. We open ourselves, Holy Spirit, to listen more intently to you. More intently to you. Yes, that's what we want to do. More intently to you. We will listen to your 
small, still voice, and we will make the right choice to go wherever you go, Lord. To go wherever you go. Yes, Lord. We say yes. We choose yes. Even if it looks difficult or something that we don't think we can bear, Lord. But we know you are there. You are there right beside us, leading the way. And from you, we choose not to stray. We choose to focus on our shepherd and his still small voice. And yes, we will make the right choice. It's not your ways. 
It's not church way. It's not religion's way. It's my way, says the Lord. And if you learn to cooperate with me, I'll get you to where you need to be. And you'll be right on time. You'll not come behind in anything because you followed me. You trusted me with all your heart. Yes, Lord. And it'll show up. It'll, it'll cause you to prosper when you yield yourself to me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we magnify you tonight. We glorify you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're good. You're good to us. Thank you, Father. Ah, we worship you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you tonight. Hallelujah. Does anybody know what tonight is? Holy Ghost Night. Holy Ghost Night. Well, what's that? Well, it's been a few years, but... Uh, I, I must have been, well, it's been, been here 25 years, so about 22 years ago, 23 years ago, the Lord said, because we just moved into the building, it had been 2004, uh, he said to me, he said, uh, uh, on Sunday nights, I want you to have Holy Ghost night. And I said, well, that sounds like a good idea to me, but I better, uh, I might have my ideas what the Holy Ghost <laughs> night is, but uh, what do you want? What's, what's your idea of Holy Ghost night? Because you want to talk to the Holy Ghost about these things. <laughs> he said, when you come, he said, go home Sunday after the morning church. Go home, pray, spend some time praying in the Holy Ghost. Get as many people in the congregation that would spend some time praying in the Holy Ghost. And then Sunday night, just show up. Right. Don't prepare. Right. Just show up. Yep. Hallelujah. I said, well, that sounds like a plan. Yes. Sounds good. I said, but, you know, what we got to... Keep an ace up your sleeve. I said, now that don't work. <laughs> oh, oh. I said, that don't work, Lord. We're going to sing a few songs, take up the offering, and we're going to go home early. Well, 23 years, 24 years, 25, 22, 22 years. 22 years have come and gone. We've never gone home early yet. Hallelujah. 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 Well, isn't God good? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, why don't we just take up our Sunday night offer? Thank you for your excitement. Yeah. <laughs> you, ought excited. you ought to get excited yeah. about getting into yeah. the kingdom of God. We need to be excited about what God's doing. This is, like, this is the way God prospers us. He prospers us uh, uh, by our sowing. Somebody said, well, I have a need. He said, well, so? <coughs> he said, well, I, I can't take my car payment. So? No. Not S-O, S-O-W. Sow. You sow. So we're people that sow into the kingdom of God. I believe it was it over in Genesis chapter 6 or 8 that talks about there'll be a seed time and harvest. And as long as the earth remaineth, there'll be seed time and harvest. And so we have seed to sow. Hallelujah. I like Second Corinthians 9.8. It's been one of my favorite scriptures. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Hebrew, the, the Amplified says, every favor and earthly blessing. Amen. Every favor and earthly blessing he is Thank able to Jesus. make come to you and me. Now it has to do with our giving and our sowing. Yes. It says that you have all sufficiency in all things that you might abound to every good work. Mm -hmm. Now I was there with Dr. Russ. He said he's not a prosperity preacher. Okay? Mm -hmm. But yet he believes in prosperity. Mm -hmm. okay? What is prosperity? Now, it, and what the Lord showed me, what is prosperity, is found in 2 Corinthians 9 8. That you have more than enough Amen. for every good work. Yes. That's more than enough. Yes. Say, everybody say more than enough. More than enough. Now, well, do you have more than enough now? Yes. I didn't have so many hands with that one. Not so many hands. <laughs> well, say it by faith. Amen. I got more than enough. Yes. I tell you what, God's good. Yes. God's good. He got me out of debt. I have $28,000 in the hole. You know, and I just started saying, thank you, Lord, I'm debt free. That's what I said. I said, thank you, Lord, I'm debt free. And somebody said, well, you, you can't say that. That don't work. I said, never mind. I don't pay attention to you. Yes, right. That's right. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe that what you say will come to pass, it'll come to pass. I said, thank you, Lord, I'm debt free in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. Hallelujah. I became debt free. 
Now I'd like to share this story. We do have time for a story. <laughs> I'm in Jonesboro, Arkansas with my daughter. She's about seven, eight years old and we're going through a mall and and uh, uh, I'm pastoring a little little church in the cotton country there. And, and uh, hallelujah. He said, Barusha, no doubt about this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, she turns to me, and we're going to buy an ice cream shop in the mall, and she says, Daddy, can, can I have an ice cream cone? I want an ice cream cone, Daddy. Would you get me an ice cream cone? And I said to her, I said, uh, I don't have any money. I can't get you an ice cream cone. And she said, Daddy, are we dirt water poor? And I said, no, I'm not poor. I'm broke. There's a difference between being poor and being broke. Broke is temporary. Yes. I said, now the day will come, I'll be able to buy you an ice cream, I'll be able to buy you the ice cream store. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's stick in here tonight. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if anybody else can see it, but it's, it's heavy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, we, we appreciate everything you do. We appreciate the manifestations of the Spirit. We're just so grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, why don't we... Let's say something good. I always like to talk over my, my offering. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I'm sowing tonight. tonight. The glory of God is in this place. And the glory of God is resting on my feet. I'm sowing my seed into the glory of God. And it'll produce... It'll produce good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall God get back to me through the hands of man so that I can give again? In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're blessed to have uh, Dr. Russ and, and Ashley with us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord's good. In uh, Philippians chapter 1, I'm going to just talk just for a little bit uh, about the Holy Spirit. Well, it's Holy Ghost night, so it's a good Amen. topic. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I remember Brother Hagin said many times, I heard him many times say this, oftentimes we're looking for the spectacular and we miss the supernatural. Mm. We're looking for the spectacular and we miss the supernatural. Okay? Well, God is supernatural. The Holy Ghost is supernatural. And sometimes you know, God, can, God does do spectacular things. But he does move, and he moves supernaturally. And there's many different ways the Spirit of God can move supernaturally. It can move through the gifts. We appreciate the gifts. There's nine awesome gifts of the Spirit. We appreciate all nine of them. We look forward to having them in manifestation. Okay? Sometimes, it, you know, it's through a word, just, just sharing a word that God gives. Sometimes it's through the message. Sometimes we don't realize that. Say, well, was there any gifts of the Spirit? No, but the pastor was pretty good. Well, sometimes that's where the anointing goes. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that, that, that we, we're not prepared except we are led by the Spirit. Now, the Spirit of God can lead us. The Bible says over in John 16, He'll show us things to come. Well, he showed me this morning, Dr. Rustin and Ashley would be here tonight. 
Brother Kemp come up and he said, well, you know, they're, they're here. I said, well, I already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I was forewarned by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I mean, I was led. <laughs> well, uh, Dr. Russell, I have to come. Hallelujah. Did you say, say again? I said, we'll have Dr. Russ come up in a little bit. He didn't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I still heard it. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we've, we've been in some of the services. We we're busy here with our church and the ministry, and so we do get out to to the to the worship uh, Eastgate Worship Barn, you know, when, when we can. And uh, we were out there the other night when uh, the, that young gentleman was out there. What was his name? The guy from Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Love to see the gifts. Love to see how it operated through him. It's been very refreshing, and and uh, I've seen it over over the years. I've been in this a long time, and I, I've seen you know the spirit of God move in different ways and different manifestations, and and you just have to be comfortable with how God uses you. Okay, you know a lot of people would like to be like a, a, a prophet Daniel. Okay? Well, if God wants you to be like him, I remember one day when I wasn't too awfully long ago. Uh, I hate to follow Brian Bork. I've had to. I just, just don't want to follow that man. Because he is such a, a, a dynamic fireball. He's just a wow. It just gets everything all stirred up. And then I'm, I'm just not that way. And, uh, but the Lord. And then he plays. And then he sings. And the Lord says to me, when they said, if I wanted you to preach like Brian Bork, I would have made you that way. Amen. Well, he made me the way he made me. He made you the way he made you. Yes, sir. And you're going to have to get comfortable. You think, well, I, I sure wish he'd make me different. Well, he didn't. But learn, learn to make the most of what God did. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, well, did you find Philippians? I tell you where to go. Philippians chapter 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Verse 16, one streets of Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and therein do I rejoice, and yea, will rejoice. He said, I, I, I'm just glad somebody's mentioned in Christ. Somebody's talking about God. Okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 19 says, For I know, say, say that, for I know that <clears throat> this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ. You know the Holy Ghost has got a supply? Yes. You got excited about that? Yes. The Spirit of God's got a supply. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a supply. Hallelujah. He's the, he's the supply for every service for us. He's the supply for every need in our life. Amen. He's the supply. God's got a supply. Okay? It's not, nothing takes God by surprise. Amen. Everything you've ever needed is already taken care of. Hallelujah. 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 I saw over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I think it's around verse 9, I have not seen their ear heard the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Now, that's not talking about up in the sweet by and by. It's not talking about up in heaven. It's talking about down here. God's got things prepared. The Spirit's already provided things. Now, whether you ever get to it or whether I ever get to it, that's not up to God. It's up to us. So things have been prepared. There is a supply that the Spirit has. You know, sometimes we wonder, where, where's, where's, how am I going to pay this bill? How, where's it gonna, anybody ever been there? Man, I've been there. How is it going to happen? How am I going to get this covered? You know, God's already got it taken care of. Hallelujah. We're believing God. We're, here, you see that building over there? $5.7 million. That's all. Just $5.7 million. We own the piece of property next door. Dr. Russ doesn't know this, so I might as well tell him. I get him in, in, in enlightened a little bit. I was sitting in my office, and one day, a number of years, we tried to buy the property next door when we first got the building over here. This building has been expanded quite a bit from the time we bought it. And one day, uh, in 2016, the Lord said, go, go next door and buy the property, that, that empty field. So we went over next door, and, and I went in, and I took Pastor Nelly with us and, and Dr. Evan with us, went in and told the gentleman, is that property still for sale? He said, no, it's not for sale. I actually, it's sold, basically. He says, I've got a contract on it, and I'm selling my business. We're selling the property next door, it's all going to go, and it's just going to be closing in just a couple days. Well, now the Holy Ghost told me to go buy it. <laughs> One thing I've learned, the Holy Ghost does not make mistakes. That's right. So, uh, Pastor Nelly and I, no Bible says, Matthew 18, 19, again, the same to you, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my father. So we agreed that that deal would fall through. Plus, we walked it, we bought that piece of property under the... Um, under the word of God, wherever, soul, wherever place the sole of your feet shall tread down be yours. Yes. So we walked it from stem to stern. And we claimed that. A couple of days later, the guy walks in and said, you guys still interested in buying that, that piece of property? He said, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll buy it. <laughs> so we bought that. Now, you know, I'm, I, now, now we, we, we bought the property and got a mortgage on it. And so I'm praying. I said, Lord, how are we going to pay for this? And that's when he gave, gave the vision for the church. Okay? And so uh, we have a vision. And that, that's been from 2016. Okay? We, we've just been, uh, you know, the Bible says, the Lord says it's, it's, for, uh, for an appointed time. Hallelujah. I have no doubt the money, I know the money's there. Okay? Uh, $5.7 million is nothing to God. Okay? It may be a lot to us, but it's nothing to God. Okay? Hallelujah. Well, it'll come. Yeah. It'll come. How's it going to come? Well, I don't know. That's not my business. It's just his. It, he'll get it to us. Amen. Is it warm in here now? Is it? How many thinks it's just right? How many thinks it's too warm? You're outvoted again, Kim. For I know this shall turn to my salvation through the through your prayers. Paul was a person that believed in prayer. Plus, he asked the church to pray for him. He asked the church to pray for them. You know, it's good to pray for your pastor. Yes, it is. Good to pray. I pray for the worship body. 
I, I pray for, for for Dr. Rush. I pray for Ashley. I pray for them. I pray God, you know, uh, they're believing God for revival. We're believing God for revival. Well, if we all get together, we can we, we can pray in revival. God wants to give revival more than than he than we do. That want to have it. He wants us to have it. But it help if we cooperate with each other. Amen. Amen. I tell people, you know, we, we cooperate with other churches. I said, we are not in competition. No. We're not in competition. No. We, we can work together for the glory of God. Yes. That, that's what we want to do. We want to see. I, that's the only thing I care about is God being glorified. Amen. I don't need to be seen. I don't need to be heard. That doesn't, that, that doesn't bother me. Maybe when I was younger, I might have made it, but after a while you just learn you know, all, all we want to do is just honor God Amen. Amen. glorify God the Lord Hallelujah. said the first time when we had just moved into this new part of the sanctuary the first thing he said to us he said if you honor me in this place I'll honor you mm -hmm. hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah well we, we endeavor to honor the Lord yes. honor his presence honor the Holy Spirit yes. reverence the things of God yes. glory to God yes. for I know say I know there are some things you can learn from the Holy Ghost. You can learn to trust Him. There's times I, I, I have a message I preach. I'd like to go back and preach it again if you'll let me. Uh, Lord, I don't understand, but I trust you. I, he doesn't ask us to understand. There's no place He says you need to understand this, but you do need to trust me. Hallelujah. Uh, you're there in Philippians. Um, Go over a chapter and um, um, chapter four, verse eleven. Philippians four, verse eleven. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Everybody say, I've learned. I've learned. Now you can be educated in the world, or you can be educated by the Holy Ghost. The education of the world uh, will do something for your mind. The education of the Holy Ghost will do something for your your spirit. Yes. Okay? Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in what sort of state I am therewith to be content. Hallelujah. I know, here he goes again, okay? I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Well, I was, uh, I knew uh, uh, Ed, Ed and Nancy Dufresne, uh, especially Ed, uh, he'd been in my church uh, several times down in Oklahoma, and he'd been here, and uh, then we, we had uh, some chance to visit with him and his wife uh, for uh, several years ago. And uh, uh, we got to talking about these things, about revival. And uh, they said, uh, they started talking, they said, well, they had Brother Hagin in their church, and they said, Brother Hagin, how come is, th there's churches that pray for revival and never see it, and then there's churches that pray for revival and they see it? What, what's the, is there a key there? And he said, yes. You can pray for revival but not be hungry for it. There it is. Yeah. Notice what it says here. I am instructed to both be full and to be hungry. hungry. Now he said, I have learned how to be hungry. Nobody needs to learn how to be hungry physically. A baby does not ha ha have to be taught how to be hungry. It's hungry. You don't have to be taught how to be hungry because that cake didn't even last this morning. <laughs> it was gone. It's just gone. <laughs> I found people eating back in the in the nursery, yeah, even tonight. I'm hungry. But you have to be instructed how to be hungry for revival. You see, when you're hungry, God wants to feed you. God wants to pour some things out to you. Why? Because, hey, they're hungry. What are they hungry for? They're hungry for me. They're hungry for me to come. They're hungry for, for my, my presence to be there. They're hungry oh, for my will to be accomplished. Yes. They're hungry to see people saved and delivered yes. and, and healed and, and turned around. Oh, when we get hungry. When we get hungry. 
Then he says, I, I can do something. Paul said, I've learned how to be hungry. Every place Paul went, he seemed to have revival. But man, did he ever have persecutions too? Oh, yeah. okay? And you can't be in this very long. Uh, 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 Dr. Russell, you can't, you can't be in this very long and, and without some persecution. Okay? If they're going to call you false prophet, and they do, okay? everywhere, oh, everywhere we go. They call that and they call me that too. Okay? But that's okay. Because God's not calling me that. Amen? Amen. Amen. God says, I'm, 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 your, I'm, I'm His chosen. I'm His favorite. I'm the apple of His eye. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got His Spirit on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Dr. Russell, do you mind? Will you want to come up and just minister a little bit tonight? Hallelujah. 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 I surely wasn't expecting you, Pastor. Well, it's a Holy Ghost night. Thank you, sir. And one of the things I always tell anybody that comes up here, I, I have this, this rule that I have. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I just wanted to come out and and to be here. It's Sunday night and I like to I like to get into glory. It's always a Holy Ghost service, so you know, Pastor said so many wonderful things that show his heart for the kingdom. You know, where he talked about unity there and I believe that's really the prelude to a move of the spirit, that we're not competing with each other. We're completing each other. We're, yeah. Yeah. we're supposed yeah. to walk together, work together. Yeah. And he talked about the gifts. And, you know, we all have gifts. And we have multiple gifts, many people. And we all come together to make the body. Yeah. And no matter what gift you have, you bring it to the table. And it's a wonderful and beautiful thing that we can all eat and drink. And he talked about the tribe of hungry. These are wonderful things that are on my heart right now. I mean, it's just... It's a beautiful time to serve the Lord. You know, it's a difficult time when we look at what's happening as we see end time prophecy unfolding before our eyes. We see the trials, tribulations, chaos that's going on in the world. But you know, we have the peace of Jesus Christ. And that perfect peace that goes beyond understanding. In other words, it's not just what's on my mind, but no matter what's going on around me, I have this peace in me. That I know he's still on the throne. That I know he's yeah. going to handle these things for yeah. me and mine. And that perfect peace that lets you know that he's really still there, really doing the job. And he is. As bad as it may look right now on the surface, he works everything together for good. For every one of us. And he's got, he's got good intention for all of us. You know, as we were worshiping, I really appreciate the presence of the Lord. And, um... I just like to flow in that yeah. in a minute, if I could, uh, Pastor. You know, I, you talked about vision and about vision. I don't hear very well, so Asher was telling me some things you were saying there. But I feel like the vision here is big. It's grand and it's wide. And uh, and I feel like something was going, and, and it was going along fine. It seemed to be going up and up a little further and up further. Then all of a sudden there was a couple of years in the road and some things and a, a schism and then another little one. And they're trying to get your feet back under you and I see a rebuilding process that's happening. I see now in between in the empty seats I see some young people and young faces filling things in. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I see Hallelujah. some different cultures now Hallelujah. just folding in, just rolling in and feeling comfortable to be here. And the Lord said, he's going to expand the vision. Don't be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. He said that everything that I spoke to you is going to be fulfilled in due time and due season. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, fear not and fret not about the voices that are round about, says the Lord. For know it's those that are inside the camp. Know that I spoke to you. And it was me, says the Lord. The Lord says, I'm still at work right now and I'm working some things out. He said, easy is the pace in this season. Watch and wait on me, says the Lord. The sister that was leading worship says that soul mustard on your sword. And the word says that you're going to be have that heart of worship. But you're going to know who you are and that the victory is yours. He said that heart of David that's going to be quick to go to the throne but also quick to go to battle. 
There's going to be a war cry that's on your heart that's going to begin to ring out in this hour and season. And God is going to send some warriors in, 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 into your into your atmosphere, and you're going to find them touching you with different new ideas, new things, new things that are going on all around you. And there's a new sound that's coming up from your heart. And the Lord says here that the book is way different than the cover, and that there's a warrior spirit, and that you're going to war in the spirit and do the breakthroughs that come to that place of glory, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, Brother George's wife, when you were up here doing the announcements, the Lord says, I have not forgotten the mission on your heart. And the Lord says that some people said one thing, then some other people said another. There were naysayers on every side, but it was me, says the Lord, that brought you here. And I'm the one that set your feet in place. And now I'm the one that's going to get your roots down deep. But from this place, says the Lord, you'll be able to touch the nations once again. The Lord says you're in a peaceful season. He said, be at rest and be at peace. But know that I'm going to press that play button one more time, says the Lord. And we're going to take something around the block and around the nations. The Lord says the nations are still knocking on the door of your heart. And I see three women around you, very important in your life. And I see them connecting now. Like a, like a light connecting to you. And I see you beginning to cry out for the nations. And he said, not only am I going to send you once again to the nations, but I'm going to bring the nations to you, says the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. To our brother in the back with the glasses, I see you with your arm raised up. And I see you holding up the ceiling. And the Lord says that you're going to be a strong and a stable voice, that business is going to be an important part of what you do. Business decisions that are actually involving church and church people. I see two wounds were on your heart. I see him patching one. And then I see him just kissing the other one. And he said, those two wounds are going to be healed in this season. And you're going to be one that's going to hold up the cover and hold up the house like a pillar, like an elder, like standing in place. The Lord said, I'm going to give you wisdom in a season that's going to strengthen you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel like, uh, I feel like the Lord is going to do some things in this region that are going to be very strategic. And he's going to bring hearts together for unity and people together. And when I came here, he said to me, strange bedfellows. And I feel like people are going to begin to gather together who may not have the same understanding, the same way of walking and living together. I have them maybe not the same way to worship, maybe not the same way to pray. But all of a sudden, he's going to begin to weave their hearts together. And it's going to all go around the hungry and the tribe of hungry. When you brought that up, even that scripture in Philippians, the Lord's been leaning on my heart about that. Because I've had some really incredible seasons and, and then some other seasons and then some wanting seasons. But you know the key is not not changing your heart or your thoughts or the direction God's giving you by the things that are outside of you. You know, it's not the circumstances and the situations that are to lead us. In order for that to be really true, that scripture has to be in your heart. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, you have to steady the ship and continue to go on. Because we're going to see a lot of things as we move further down in these end days. We're going to see some things that are, that, that are going to ruffle our feathers if we allow that to happen. But we need to keep our eyes focused on Him and not the situations that are around us. This wasn't just talking about finances, good or bad. This was talking about all the circumstances that are around us. And how do we maintain that perfect peace? So that when we walk into a place where there are non-believers that are just off the wall because of all the things that are going on in the wall and in the world around us, that they can see the peace of Christ in us. And we can bring that peace and anywhere we are because we're not dependent on the circumstances. We're not dependent on whether it's raining or whether it's sunshine, whether there's war, rumors of wars. We know the end. And we know the one that brings peace. We know the Prince of Peace. And he dwells in us. 
And Father, we just thank you for this moment in time. I, I thank you, Lord, for this house. I thank you for the vision of this house, and I bless it, Lord. I, I bless Pastor and his family. I, I bless the leaders in this place. I bless the leaders in the city and in the region, Lord. And, and Father, every vision that came from your heart, I thank you, Lord, that it will be fulfilled in due time and in due season. And Father, we've all sown seed in the Spirit, and I call that in right now. Father, your, your eye is on our seed and your heart is for our harvest. No matter where we sowed it, no matter where it is, no matter where it was, your eye is on our seed. Father, I call it into alignment right now. Every prayer, every word, every loony, every tuning, every step we ever took, every word we ever prayed that was in alignment with your heart, with your will. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And Father, I declare revival glory over the region. I declare moments in your presence that even those who don't understand the glory realm, Father, you'll be touched by your presence, by your power, by your love, by your glory, Lord. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your glory fill the city and the region. I declare revival glory over Canada. Father, this nation has so many great and wonderful words spoken over for the end time move of the Spirit. I say every one of them are yea and amen. Yea and amen for move of the Spirit. Father, I thank you for the Maritimes. I thank you for gathering the tribe of hungry together. I thank you for those that have gathered tonight in your presence. Because it's your presence that we long for. It's your heart that we desire, your face that we see, your beauty. Just let your glory fill this temple. Let your glory fill this house. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. You are the king of glory. There is none like you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. You're the root and the offspring of David. You are the bright morning star. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Come and roar in our hearts tonight. Guide your steps, lead us, guide us, direct us, protect us. Father, I ask that your hand of blessing and your hand of favor be on everyone that's in this place. Let your love, let your joy, let your hope bounce across their hearts and abound off the walls of their home. And wherever they go and whatever they do, let the love and the light of the Lord shine. Not just to them, Lord, but through them. And I declare, Lord, that not one seed would fall to the ground, but the fullness of the harvest that you ordained for this house, for this place, for us, O oh God, that the fullness of the harvest, that we would indeed walk into our destiny in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Just enjoy being with you. Thank you. God is not mocked, for whatsoever things a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. <clears throat> for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit. And notice that part about sowing to the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Sowing to the Spirit. You can sow, to if you can sow to the flesh, you can indulge the flesh, you can feed the flesh, you can pamper the flesh. You can spoil the flesh, but you can also indulge the Holy Spirit. Okay? We can sow to the Spirit. We can yield, or just yielding yourself to the will of, of the Holy Spirit as part of sowing. Praying in the Holy Ghost is sowing. Yes. Just yielding to, to the leading of the Spirit. And when we come to church, I'm always asking the Lord, I said, Lord, who do you want to open? Who do you want to come up afterwards? Who do you want to do the offering? Who, who, who? Because it's, I'm not looking, you know, just in the natural. I'm looking. I'm listening on the inside. 
I'm, I'm listening on the inside. I'm, I'm endeavoring to be led of the Spirit, even in the smallest of things. Hallelujah. <coughs> so we can sow to the Spirit. And when you sow to the Spirit, there is life. Amen? Amen. Now, if, if we always not talking about, it says, uh, <coughs> read from life everlasting. It's, to, it's all, you're already saved. Yeah. You're already on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. But it's talking about blessings that are going to bless you throughout now and eternity. Amen. So God's got things that can bless us down here. Amen. And God's got things that are going to bless us when we get to heaven. Amen. 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 But we need to keep sowing to the Spirit. Amen. Because there will come a harvest. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, sowing to the Spirit. You know, it takes a little bit of effort. You say, well, I, I just don't know how to do that. Well, I'll start praying in the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, I, you know, I do is I thank the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures, I was with Donna Douglas. She's Ellie Mae Clampett of the Beverly Hillbillies. Many years ago, she was in my services for a time. Uh, she was in uh, uh, three of my churches. And uh, and so she uh, she would pass out her picture, and and, uh, and she had wrote on the back or on the front of the picture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, if we could put that up there. And I'm thinking, girlfriend, you ought to get yourself a better scripture. <laughs> I said, that's just so, so mundane. And it says, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge Him, uh, and, and He will direct your path. And so I, I kept thinking, you yeah, get yourself a better scripture. <laughs> but she did, she didn't pay any attention to me, thank God. <laughs> but, you know, over the years I began to find myself praying the scripture. Trust in the Lord. It is powerful, powerful. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure things out. But in all of your ways, acknowledge Him. He'll direct your path. And I was praying that, and one day the Holy Ghost said to me, but why don't you do that? And I said, well, I have been doing it. He said, no, you haven't. I said, yes, I have. He said, no, you have not. You have not been. I said, I pray that scripture. He said, yes, you pray that scripture, but you do not acknowledge me in all your ways. And I go, oh. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. And so I began to confess that he, he leads me. He anoints me. He guides me. I have the mind of the Spirit. I have the mind of God. I know the will of the Spirit. I'm just led of the Spirit. And I begin to confess those things. And guess what? He starts guiding my steps. Yeah. Ashley, would you come? Amen. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Please obey the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Okay? Lord, I thank you for that word of the moment. That word of the now. You know, when I came in here tonight, I saw... It looked like it was um, black writing on the roof that someone had scribbled. And I thought, Lord, what is that? It looked like it was, you know, a curse of writing on the roof. And I heard the Lord say that you're not quite where he's calling you, but you're in this place of in-between. And I heard the Lord say that the season in this place is changing. He says the winds of change are blowing. He says, you're not where I've called you to be, but you're in this place of in-between. And he says, there's a great transition that's happening even in the spirit realm. And the Lord says that you're coming into a, the fullness of time. He says that the season that you're about to step into is one of great reconciliation. And the Lord says that the scribbling that on the ceiling, there were words that people were speaking. And the Lord says that in this season, you're going to watch and see how I'm redeeming the time, but I'm going to begin to wipe some labels off the roof. And he says, I'm going to expose some lies, and I'm going to expose the chatter in the background. And the Lord says, there were some things that were said that I'm exposing. And the Lord says that you're going to understand what was truth and what was really truth. And the Lord says that I'm not Lord. I'm showing you what was truth. And the Lord says that not only is the tribe of hungry here, but the tribe of truth is here. And right now, I just bind up every kind of word curse that's been spoken over this place. I bind up the word curses that have been spoken over the leadership. I bind the word curses that have been spoken over this pastor right now in Jesus' name. I break the word curses.
curses right now over the land. I break the word curses over this house now in the name of Jesus. I break the word Glory. curses over the worship team now in Jesus' name. Father, I bind those words and I send them back to the sender. But send them back with blessings, Lord. Let blessings rain on every single person that cursed this place. And Father, I thank you right now that you're redeeming the time. That you're redeeming the words. Father, I thank you for a season of reconciliation. Father, I thank you that there were seeds that were sown in days gone by. And they're going to reap. Oh, they're going to reap, Lord. Father, a season of reaping is coming. And Pastor, I see a season that says do. D-U-E. He says there are some things that are due to you. Due to your name. Due to your bloodline. Due to your bank account. Due to your marriage. Due to you. Due to you. Due to you. Due to you. He says there's some people that try to do some things. But you're going to watch and see how what I do. He says there's some people that try to do some things in this place. But you're going to watch and see what I do. And he says because of your heart and unity with me and bringing down the barriers and even with women in leadership you're going to watch and see how I kiss some things and you're going to watch and see what I do says the Lord amen, amen. amen. I hope that made sense to you <laughs> amen Jesus 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 well Miss Kim I've been waiting to meet you <laughs> I have been meaning to we we have a mutual friend. I just told Apostle Sandra that you're here. And I said, you know what, I wasn't sure if you were going to be here, but when we came into the parking lot, I said, Dr. S, I said, I hear a woman singing. I think that's Miss Kim White. Yeah. Miss Kim White, when I heard you worshiping tonight, I heard the voice of Joanne McFadder. And I heard the Lord say that it's not only a changing of seasons here, but it's a changing of seasons for you. He says, I've been doing a healing on your heart in the last three years. And he says, you're coming from an end of one season and the beginning of a brand new one. And the Lord says that you're going to watch and see how relationships that were broken are going to come back. He says, there's going to be a great season of reconciliation and of restoration. And the Lord says, it's touching your roots where you fulfill destiny. He says, but not only is it a changing of seasons, he says, what you, what you went through or where you're standing now, he says, you're going to find a fresh anointing coming to you. He says, there's going to be an anointing that begins to come in the secret place, an anointing that begins to come in the prayer closet, an anointing that begins to come that breaks the yoke. He says, that's not only an anointing for warfare, but it's an anointing of love. He says, love despite, because of love doesn't matter what. He says, you're going to watch and see how an anointing of love begins to penetrate and flow through you in a brand new gifting area. He says you're about to birth some things and a season of birthing is coming to you and a season of birthing things in the spirit of birthing things in the natural and a birther. He says you're going to begin to reproduce after like kind. You're going to find people come around about you to birth. He says get ready says God. He says some things look one way but it's only like that on the surface. He said but there's a fresh anointing and a season of birthing that's all around about you says the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the season. We thank you, Lord, for the shifting. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And, Father, we just seal what you're doing with your love. Father, I thank you for angels all around this place. Angels coming all over this room. Lord, Father, I thank you. You know the ones they need. Lord, you know the, the ministering angels, the warring angels. Father, I thank you that you're doing just a cleansing of the land, a cleansing of this place, a cleansing of the pews, a cleansing of the airline, of the waves, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for the Holy Ghost deposit in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. spiritually because I, I didn't go. I didn't make it. But uh, when you get to be pastor, you get to make all the services. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Brenda, yes. you want to come up? I'm going to give you two 
Two Brenda minutes. <laughs> Everybody say two Brenda minutes. Two Brenda minutes. <laughs> she knows. She knows. No, we love you. You know that. I have no no problem with you obeying the Holy Ghost, so I won't tell you. <laughs> well, during worship, um, words were going through my head, and I tried to erase them because I thought I was thinking them. And I said, stop, stop, stop thinking that. Get on to, you know, concentrate. <coughs> but the word was strategy. It was strategizing. And I saw this picture... <laughs> And I don't like being in the room with these prophets, believe you me. But Lord, you'll help me. I, you know my heart. I want to, I want to speak right for two minutes. <laughs> anyway, I, I saw. You know how um, when people are lost or in wartime or whatever, and they're in this room, this top secret room, and and they're all pouring over these papers and strategizing and everybody's concentrating and it's so serious and it's so secretive and it's so life changing. Mm -hmm. It's going to mean life or death what's happening in this room. Yes. And I felt tonight, oh, oh, I felt that there was strategizing going on in the spirit and then the Lord said, you know, I have plans because of the plans that I have for you. And I thought, God is strategizing. Yeah. And he needs us to, to set up, uh, to prepare ourselves and to flow in the Spirit and to hear from God and to know how to hear the orders and follow the orders and have a command center. And I just felt tonight that there was strategy going on here. And I even felt that there was darkness being held at bay because of the worship and the power and the realms of God that we entered into in the spirit realm tonight as the tribe of hungry, which I love that phrase, pressed into God. There's something about hunger. Hunger. Oh, may to God. God, we'd be hungry. Yes. And, you know, I wrote a card off one time to a lady, and the Lord told me to say, I have need of you. I need you. And I thought, oh, no, Lord, I, I can't say that. And I felt it in my spirit to say it. I said, I can't say that. How many times have you heard, God doesn't need you? God doesn't need you. He can... And of course God can do everything, but He does need us because He's got plans and we're in the plans and we are the plan. Right? right. So I wrote that card and sent it off to her. And the Lord does need us. And I'm glad He does. And I pray to God that we hear from God. And I'm going to tell you a quick story, I think. Help me, Lord. Am I supposed to do this? I want to tell you, ho, oh, I want to tell you something. Ho, oh. okay, oh God, help me do it quick. Um, I'm from a small island, as you know. I'm there and I'm restless in my spirit. I'm going to tell you this quick. I'm real restless because I think i got to go to the mainland because i got to take the ferry, i got to go to the mainland because i got this and this and this and this to do. And that's what you need when you're on a small and you have to go to a bigger place. Anyway, but I didn't know why. I just felt this restlessness. And I thought, this is crazy. Back up, get in the car, drive up to the boat, go away. What's the big deal? I felt this restlessness, restlessness. Anyway, um, so I... The, the, little church where I was going to, a couple churches actually, but uh, they were having an outdoor service and um, the minister had a birthday. Well, the Lord put it on my heart, at, oh, why this wrestling's going on, um, this crazy, crazy birthday poem. It, it, the Lord started out, what a sense of humor God has. And the Lord started out, and I thought, I don't, 
want to write that one? Oh, the things he has me do. I don't know. But anyway, he says, he said, I want you to write this poem. What in the world was I thinking when I had you be born or something like that? It all rhymed. It was good. But what was I thinking? I thought, I don't want to tell him that. But anyway, the Lord had me write this poem. It was funny. It was deep. It was amazing. And it was about his past, his present, and his future. It was prophetic. It was powerful. And he told me after, when I read it at this outdoor service, he said three things in his entire life has changed him dramatically and he said one of them was that word that you give me today oh. so I just saw oh thank you God thank you God anyway why I'm at this this um, picnic having a great time and the waves are crashing it's sunny and we're just having church and then we're having a barbecue and I'm talking to my cousin and all of a sudden I think oh my goodness I'm supposed to clean my little cottage, Airbnb. People are coming on the ferry, and here I am, and oh my gosh, is it I coming in? Am I going to be able to get there? And then, oh my, what am I thinking? Here I am, and I'm supposed to be out there cleaning. So, I got in the vehicle, and I drove very quickly, and got there, because not only did I only have a little bit of time before the ferry came in and brought these guests to a dirty camp, um, the tide may be coming up, and I had to race to catch the tide because my camp's on the beach, and the tide comes up the driveway, and, and I have heavy things to carry into the camp, so I need to drive. Anyway, I'm just a zooming, coming out that dark harbor road, and down the wharf, and uh, I'm telling you, no word of lie, the, the rocks are flying, the dust is flying, and... And at the wharf, there's a bunch of people, and that wasn't unusual because a lot of tourists come and they read the, the notes and what's going on out there at the salmon research center. So I caught them at uh, the glimpse of my eye as I'm zooming by on the beach and zooming to that camp, 100 miles an hour, and I just caught them out of the corner, but you know, it looked like a bunch of guys, I guess, I don't know. So I'm driving up my driveway, and I'm starting to unload. Oh, wow, you just wait till you hear this. It's just wild. Anyway, so I drive up my driveway, start to unload, and think, thank you, God, for reminding me I'm supposed to be here. Thank you for helping me to beat the tide. So, and I see that the tide's coming in. So um, all of a sudden, as I'm getting stuff out, I see a couple fellas come walking along, and and they can see that the tide's coming. And I'm thinking, well, what are they? What are they coming this way for? They're going to get trapped in the tide. But they keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Well, you know me. I said, oh, hello there. You know, to them they said, oh, hello. So of course they come up the driveway. One of them were both talking, but one had a quite an accent. And um, I said, well, you're not from Canada. He said, no, no. He said, I'm from a place probably you don't even know. He said, it's way, I think, northern Scotland or somewhere, an island. Way out. The Hebrides. I, I said, and this is what I said, I think all Dark Harbor heard me. What to God that Graham and Anne would have a revival like the Hebrides because at church, every Sunday night for months and months and months, the, the pastor, the female pastor, preached on revival. Well, she had us so pumped. Revival, revival, revival. And, of course, for years, I'm talking fast, for years there was a group of ladies that God orchestrated me, us to pray, and that's all we prayed. We prayed hours and hours and hours, no limit on the on revival and the heart of God, what he wanted to do on the island, in the nation, whatever, but on the island. <laughs> Sunday night, and oh, so um, I thought, well, dear God. And then all the rest of the other men come. And so I thought, darn it, I didn't want them to come. I wanted to talk to him. He said, I come from a long line of 
ministers. And I thought, yes, oh, I want to touch you. Oh, I could just touch you. But I thought, I don't know how to do it properly. And especially when all these men come and they've ruined my plan. I had plans. And so anyway, I said, well, come on in the camp and I'll show you around and all that. So all the men all trumped in and I thought, I just wish they would go. I just want this fella. So anyway, um, so they're getting ready to leave. And listen, I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you the truth. When I come flying down there, I honestly, in my spirit, I'm not telling a lie, don't lie in church, Bobby Connor says, I saw angels, later, I saw angels at the war, and this is what they're doing. Oh, where is she? Where? I did. I saw angels, and they're going like, where is she? We've got to get her here, because we got a divine assignment. That's why I had that in my spirit, like, what? Just go away, Brandon. What's the big deal? God had from eternity past an assignment because he saw hunger, hunger, desperation. All my life I've been this way. I've told you. I didn't even know what's been wrong with me. I, I couldn't figure it out, but I think I am now. <laughs> anyway, so they started to leave the camp. And... The tide was up. I mean, my word, they were going to have to swim or wade or something to get back to the wharf. But anyway, they started to leave. And I thought, oh, dear God, oh, dear God, he's going to leave. Someone from the Hebrides. I'm never going to see probably anyone from the Hebrides again. And I thought, but I want to touch him. But what do I do? As he was leaving, he reached out his hand. <laughs> and I grabbed it gently. And I, I thought, oh, a transference of the anointing. Yes, 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 I got it. So I went to church that night. Little Baptist church, minister, female minister, preaching, just preaching for months on the revival. Revival, revival. And she is squirming and moving. And I thought, oh, dear, maybe I'm taking too much time. I don't know why. What's wrong with her? Because I hadn't seen her like that. But she's just a antsy. And she got up. Finally, when I sit down, because I'm wild. I am wild. Oh, I had yeah. just got a transference minority from the Hebrides. And I'm wild. So anyway, I she likes for people to testify. So I testified oh, and I told them all that. All that. Oh, and um, anyway, she, she got up and she said, well... Brenda doesn't know this, but she said years, a few years ago, she said when there was an evangelist that come, Steve Wingfield, to the island, and she said, and I helped with the meetings, and she said, when he got to the island, whoo-hoo, hang on, when, when he got to the island, Steve got a phone call from his friend, I don't know who he was, but he said, Steve, I gotta tell you, before you have your meetings on Grammy, I gotta tell you, I just got a word from the Lord. Whoa! Woo! I just got a word from the Lord. Graham and Ann is going to have a revival like the Hebrides! Woo! How? So I'll tell you. Let's get strategizing. Let's get the work of God done. And let's move with the Spirit. Let's change things in the Spirit. Let's turn the world upside down. He just needs a few hungry, desperate people that put their stake in the ground and say, No, I'm not moving until I see the kingdom come, the will be done, and God's glory fill this earth. I'm not like the others, and I'm, 
hide me, Lord. <laughs> Anyways, I, I just one thing I, I could hear when um, everybody was talking, and it was it was fragrance. It was fragrance, and I just I just felt that God was putting a supernatural fragrance on the people, on His people. And because I was saying, Lord, how can we be a light? How can we? And this has all been touched on tonight. How can we shine for him? How can we tell people that are lost about you when they don't want to hear? And he said, I'm going to put a fragrance on you. And you know, if you've ever had a really good fragrance, like a really expensive perfume, and you, and you walk in a mall or a crowded place, and you walk by someone, and you go, oh, wow. Awesome, you know, yes. that's what God's going to do. Wow. He's going to put a fragrance because I was just sitting there and I, as, as, you know, everybody's speaking and I'm saying, Lord, so often, and I know this is your cry too, how do we touch the lost? How do we, how do we? They don't want to hear words. You already said a hundred thousand words to them. You can't say any more words. But he said, I'm putting a fragrance on you. That all you have to do is you walk in that place, and there's going to be a fragrance on you that's going to attract you. And they're going to turn around and go, that was really nice. Wow. And you know, if you've ever had that scent, and sometimes you may have even gone to a person and say, what are you wearing? Women will do this to women. And they'll say, you know, I don't know if guys do this, but I know women do this to women. And they'll go, what are you wearing? What's that called? And I, and I believe that the people are, they're going to come to us. You're going to smell something and say, what's that you got? And that's going to open up the door to tell us, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's a fragrance from heaven. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. Everything's been good tonight. It's so awesome. Holy Spirit, just keep moving, moving, moving. Moving and stirring it up inside of us. Stir up that hunger. That hunger that will just reach forth. That hunger. That hunger that is desperate. Not because we don't... Desperate is the wrong word. Because the word of desperate means you, you just have no hope. We're not hopeless. But we are striving. Knowing that if we can... We can stir up ourselves to be hungry. Hungry for more of you. Hunger. Hunger to crowd out everything else that's pressing on us, but just to have more of you, and more of you, and more of you, and God uses all in our individual capabilities, because every one of us is part of this body, and every one of us is different, and every one of us will carry something different, but all together, God, we're your body, and all together, God, we're that army, Lord, that is strategizing, Lord. As Sister Brenda was talking about that army, I, I had heard a story about Winston Churchill. You all know he's one of the greatest generals. Yeah. And he had gone to a conference, and they called him up to speak. And he got up, he took the microphone, and he said two words. And he sat down. They were all expecting a long message. And he just said, Don't... Quit. Don't quit. So I'm saying tonight, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Those words. Don't quit. Hallelujah. God is so good. I could have jumped out of my chair 20 times tonight as people were talking. But I was like, well, that's just, you know. Just not the proper time to do this right now. But I'm like, oh, this is good. This is good. I'm like, suck it to the devil. Yes! Give it to him. So good. So good. You know, you want to beat the devil sometimes, you know, but he's a spirit. I can't beat him. But tonight, oh, tonight he got beat. Hallelujah. God, you're good. And it's not that we want to, we're not beating people. Because I love what that sister prayed. When she said, take those words back to the senders, but bless them. Bless them. Amen. Bless them. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principles and powers. And so, Lord, arm us, God. Let the prayer, Lord of Ephesians, that whole armor, Lord. God, let us straighten up that armor. Some of us, have the, the armor's kind of hanging on to a side, and it's crooked, it's rusty. But, Lord, I pray that we will just refresh and 
and shine up and polish that armor with the oil of the Holy Ghost tonight. Father, every part of that armor is, is shiny and it, it works and there's no creaks in it. Everything works fluidly, Lord God. That armor is working fluidly, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We're covered with the armor of God. And every part, there is not a screw in that armor that's loose, that's a creaky, that's stuck. But every part is moving. And it's quick to move this way and that way and that way and this way. And from every attack that comes, that armor is ready. It's protecting. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the words that were spoken over us tonight. Father, we embrace them. We receive those words. We cherish those words, Father God. Father, you said in your word, Paul to Timothy, you said, now you wage a good warfare over those words of prophecy that were spoken over you. He said, don't let them fall to the ground, but fight for those words that were given to you. So, Father, we fight for those words. We hold those words. Father, there's people here standing. They're standing, Lord, in command. They're standing on guard. They're standing on the walls. They're watchmen. And they're standing on the walls and they're watching. And when those words come, they take those words. And they guard those words. I just see certain people standing on walls. And you hear words that others may not hear. But God's got you standing there. Because everybody can't be a watcher. There's got to be some others down there doing something. That's right. But there's some watchers. And you will yes. take those words. You will yes. fight with those words. Yes. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's really cool. Yes. I wish I could show you what I'm seeing. That's really cool. Yes. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We stand on those walls. We are watchers. God, there's others that are rebuilding the wall. But then there's others that are just standing there. Just walking back and forth. In the spirit, they're walking back and forth. They're just watching. They're watching. They're listening. They're listening. They hear commands. They hear just a word. They hear just a whisper. However it comes. Because in war, you do not give the command the same time. The same way every time. Sometime it'll come this way. Sometime that way. There's all different commands that an army has to give to their to their generals. That's right. mm -hmm. And I thank you, Father. Our generals are awake and they're watching. Mm -hmm. They're watching, Lord. Because mm -hmm. God, you're doing so much bigger than what we can see. We think it's all about this little our little church and wherever you go, your little church and whatever. But God you are not concerned about one little church. You are concerned about the harvest worldwide. Your church is worldwide. When you look down, you see the whole earth. You don't see one church. You see the whole earth. And your heart is for the harvest of the nations. So, Father, again, we've cried this before, Lord, but give us your heart. Give us your heart, God, that we will have your heart, oh God, for the nations and for lost souls. Because you said, I'm not willing that any should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, even tonight you're just, you're just doing a new thing in us. You're such a good God of new things. You like new things, God. You like just doing new things. And Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful. We receive them, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Kathy O'Hare. Kathy O'Hare. Just obey the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Hallelujah. 